Entrance hymn number 345, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please rise. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here till the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear lovely people of God. Good morning, Father. Today, the Mother Church is celebrating St. John of the Cross. We pray to this special saint that he continues to intercede for us before the throne of God through Christ our Lord. Since we are before God our Father, let us present our individual intentions before him. We have all fallen short of God's grace by sinning against him. Let us now pause a while and tell him that we are sorry. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask my Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. John an outstanding dedication to perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating, imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Thus says the Lord, Woe to the city, rebellious and polluted, to the tyrannical city. She hears no voice, accepts no correction. In the Lord she has not trusted. To her God she has not drawn near. For then I will change and purify the lips of the peoples, that they will all may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia and as far as the recesses of the north, they shall bring me offerings. On that day, you need not be ashamed of all your deeds, your rebellious actions against me. For then will I remove from your midst the proud braggarts, and you shall no longer exalt yourself on my holy mountain. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble 
and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall they there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth, that my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and those he who are crushed in spirit he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come, O Lord, do not delay. Forgive the sins of your people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priest and the elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, both now and forever. Amen. My dear people of God, I want us this morning to reflect on this theme, faithfulness to our promises. Faithfulness to our promises. 
In the gospel of today, my dear ones, Jesus gave a parable of two sons. The father asked them to work in his vineyard. The first one immediately refused, but later responded and went. The second one promised to go, but never went. I want to approach this parable from two point of views. Let us see it from two dimensions. The surface moral lesson and the deeper spiritual implication. For the point of view of the surface moral lesson of this parable and from the deeper spiritual implication of this parable. At the level of moral teaching or moral lesson, this parable admonishes us to re-examine our faithfulness to God. To our words, our faithfulness to our promises, our faithfulness to each other. Many of us are very quick to promise, very quick to say yes, very quick to agree. Yes. We give people false hopes and make people expect what we do not hope to give them. You ask yourself, how many times have you given people false hope and made them to hope for what you can never give them? We pretend to be nice, but we know in our hearts we never meant the promises we have promised them. And we never and can never fulfill them, even though we know that we have made such promises. You have no intention of fulfilling them, but just to allow things go. Then why should you do that? Let us examine our, our lives and examine ourselves. I want to make, I want to make marital promise my case study. The marital promise, my case study. The promise we make to each other during the solemnization of our marriage. For those who we are married in the church, all the promises we made to each other before the whole assembly of God's people the promise of faithfulness, your assurance that you will have and hold each other in sickness and in health, for richer and for poorer, for better, for worse, until death do you part. How true are you to them today? How true are you to those promises today? Then if we are real, why all these divorces? Why all these annulments? Why all these broken homes today? Why have we decided to divide our families? Children without father, children without mother. Some are with the father, some are with the mother. 
Are we still keeping our promises? We have to think. I tell you most solemnly, my dear ones, your words will condemn you on the last day if you are unfaithful to your promises. And unfortunately, so many are now doing the exact opposite of what they promised. One who promises and fails is not a person of integrity. When you promise and fail, you are not a person of integrity. You have a question mark in your character. And he or she is not worthy of the name Christian. You promise what you can do. Otherwise, from, from Abinicio, you should abscond and be true to yourself. That I know these things I cannot I cannot meet up with them until I have the, 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 the firm purpose, until I, until I am firm to decide. At a deeper spiritual consideration of this parable, this parable talks almost about the religious leaders and people of Israel they appear to be ready to obey God, but their lives are full of rebellion. Like the picture of Jerusalem painted in the first reading of today. The tax collectors and the harlots are known as sinners and rebellious people, but many of them accepted the baptism of John, and repented and began to bear good fruits as evidence of their repentance. Remember, the first said, no, in the parable, I will not, I will not go into the vineyard, but later he repented and went into the vineyard to work for his father. The second readily said yes, but never went. Yes, it will be surprise that sinners will be forced to attend heaven. Those with, with, with tact sinners. Because we will be there criticizing them. We will be there gossiping about them without us knowing that they have repented. And lo and behold, during the last days of our life, after the judgment, you will see them. You will see them in heaven. You will see them in heaven. There is going to be surprises in heaven. Yeah. Going to be surprises in heaven. Those you think that will be in heaven will not be there. And those you don't think and never dreamt of will be in heaven. And that is the surprise. But the greatest surprise should be that you yourself will find yourself in heaven. This is how this concerns us today, my dear ones. Many of us profess to be Christians, believers, Catholics, but the lives of those who are non-believers are better than our own lives. They are more God-fearing than us. Oh, yes. They are more loving. They are more charitable. They are more respectful. They are more wiser. Better in conduct than us. This parable is to turn us inward so that we may ask ourselves those, so that we may ask ourselves pertinent questions. Does my action contradict my profession of faith? 
let us ask ourselves this question, does my actions contradict my profession of faith? In any way my action contradicts my profession of faith, I am in the wrong direction. And so my brothers and sisters, this parable is a very challenging one to me and to you. It is a call for us to go inward and think about what we say before, before you say anything, before you promise anything. Pray over it. Pray over it. Pray over it. And when you do, try as much as possible to fulfill them. Yes, yeah, some of us we say, yeah, we are human beings, we are, we are imperfect. Oh yes, God knows that we are imperfect. But God says, my grace is enough for you if you want to keep your promises. My grace is enough for you. And therefore we don't have any excuse. So when you're in doubt of your grace, you pray. And you will receive God's grace. Because he told us, ask, and you shall receive. It is there in the Bible. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7. Let us meditate along this line. Is near. We are told to ask for anything we need with prayer and thanksgiving. Therefore, let us pray to the Father. For our Pope and all bishops of our church, that they may guide us with sound doctrine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who teach the Catholic faith, that they may make Christ's words and deeds known to others with enthusiasm and accuracy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in poverty, that they may know the comforting message from our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of those who died in Kentucky and for their loved ones, those who died from the tornadoes last week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of St. Jude in our community, that they may have peace and joy this Advent season. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to the COVID pandemic and healing for those who have it, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick and who are dying, for those who have died, and for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the soul of Mary Worth in this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Most loving Father, hear the prayers of your people and guide us in true peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and wake of my hands to become for us a special drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer you, Almighty God, in commemoration of St. John of the Cross, and grant that we who celebrate the, mem the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now enact through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To do right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets are foretold. The Virgin Mary, Mother of God, longed for him. With love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as with that end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, a Pope, Edward, a Bishop, Gregory, the Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that we, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and St. John of the Cross, 
and St. Jude Tadeus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Lord, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamp of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O God, who in St. John of the Cross have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that growing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, your prayer.